Um, you know, I want to start with this. The running back position is the only position in American football, okay, that you can be hit from any angle and it's completely legal. You know, they've always said it's a little bit like a car wreck over and over. You take a month off when the season ends and all you do is swim and cycle. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, after about in that time and then swim and cycle all the way up to off-season workouts when we can start, you know, that's when I start lifting and, and getting my body back where it needs to be. But you you eat pizza like the rest of us. Oh, yeah, pizza, ice cream, hamburgers, I do it all. And you gain how many pounds? At least 20. At least? Yeah. That's a bad year. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a bad year. So you <laughs> basically, it's over. You take a big break and you're like, I'm going to be a citizen. I'll do a little spin cycle. I'll do a little swim. I'm going to put on weight, feel good, and let my body heal. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, it's funny because you came to the Rams. You got a call from the Rams, and you were with the Panthers. And I remember seeing that, and I'm like, oh, yeah, CJ can play. Did you Were you surprised at all by the effect you had <laughs> immediately on the team? It was remarkable. Um, No, not really. It's, it's kind of up and down. Like, when I got the call, uh, you know, it was another opportunity. I was excited for that. And then when I got in the building, it reminded me so much of 2015 when we won it all. Um, the 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 acceptance and the and and the accountability from the locker room, and then there's me being a vet a veteran in my room alone, you know, trying to help T G and 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 John Kelly and and J D and a bunch of those guys, and um, I just took that veteran presence of my experience because I played a lot of games early in my career with playoff runs and been to two Super Bowls at the time and. Um, I just tried to help out any way I can. And it felt like a winning locker room. Yeah. When I, as soon as you walked in, you can feel the vibe of what their mission was and what their goal is. And you don't really get that. You know, I was obviously, I didn't get a chance to spend this time in Denver locker room. I was released. And then Carolina locker room, it started that way. But things start to vary. And there were some up and downs. Um, and in Oakland, they were already completely out of the playoffs when I got there. And then when I got to L.A., I was like, oh, okay. This is, you know, it changes everything. When you um, – it's interesting because you're a veteran presence. I could see a team like uh, like New England liking you, teams that want a grown-up in the room. And I don't say that because all players aren't grown-ups, but largely the NFL's 24-year-old kids. <laughs> and you've been around. You went to Cal Berkeley. You've had a lot of coaches. What about McVay? Is it, it for a running back? Was it an advantage going from defensive Ron Rivera to offensive m- coach McVay? I think there's a, there's a, there's a good – you know, I've had – I started off with John Fox. Defense. And then we moved on to Gary Kubiak. Offense. And then I went back to, you know, I went to VJ, Vance Joseph. Um, and then you went to Ron defense. And then I went to Ron. So you've had mostly defense. So I've had, I've had, I had the mixture of both. I think, um, like, what I saw with McVay, it's kind of like with Kubiak and then with John Gruden, like, the head coach is offensive-minded, but they're in the offensive meetings. Oh, they are. You know, um, John Fox was never in our offensive meetings. You know, Foxy knew the offense, though. VJ was in the offensive meetings in and out, but he spent more time on the defensive end. Uh, So, you know, and Ron wasn't really in our offensive meetings a lot either. So I think that helps, you know, because obviously um, he's also the play caller. You know, Coach McVay is is seeing the things, but he's giving us, you know, instead of bringing it down or telling his coaches one thing and then playing telephone – you know, he's telling us what he wants and how it needs to be seen. And then all of us as an offensive unit is on the same page. So I think it helps out a lot. The, the game, let's talk two games. The Cowboy game was interesting because Dallas appeared flummoxed. Uh, Dallas, the story came out that, like, you guys were chirping. They were chirping. <laughs> you heard signs. Take us to why the Rams offense had so much success running the ball. There were signs that you were able to uh, uh, learn or garner during the game. I think um, – I think the accountability of our old linemen took the challenge. I think that was great. Um, I think there was, you know, during a football game, there's so many plays, there's so many plays and so many times where you can hear a call or see a call. And if you hear it and you see it the first time, it's like, okay. But then if you hear it and see it over and over, you know, that's the tell. And I think, you know, what makes Coach McVay special is the receptiveness that he takes from players, you know, myself, Whitworth, John Sullivan, players who's been in this league and have success. And go to the sideline and yeah, talk to him. Yeah, we go to the sideline and talk to him because uh, we're out there playing the game. Obviously, he sees the game from one angle. We're playing it, so we see it from another angle. So when we kind of told him what we was hearing and what, what was going on, um, you know, and helping Jared in that, in that situation of changing some plays uh, helped us with some explosive runs. Then in the Super Bowl, it was if the Patriots knew your plays. At what point in the Super Bowl, offensively, did you feel like, 
this is a struggle. Like, we're not moving the chains at all. Well, early, I mean, we I think we opened up three and out after the turnover or just five play drive and then a couple three and outs, um, you know, which is tough. You know, I said that early in the week, like we got to win on third down. Um, but I think what the Patriots do is what they've done well for the last eight games I've ever played them. You know, they're fundamentally sound. Uh, they don't give up um, too many explosive big plays, which – um, us as an offense, that's what we thrive on. Yeah. And then they find a way to take some things away. Um, and they slowed the run game around, which took away kind of our play action pass. So, um, you know, you got to give credit to them. Sucks to lose them to them. But I've had, <laughs> I've had my share of success against them, and I've had my losses against them. And I just count this in the loss column. By the way, you played them eight times? Eight times. What are you? Uh, right now I'm four, four and four. I'm actually even. Wow. Broke even. So I want to thank you. You should thank, just. Thanks, Peyton. And, and, Drop the and mic the and get the hell out of there. <laughs> nah, I gotta gotta go get him. Gotta go get him again. Let's talk about Todd Gurley. I had said during the season, I don't believe any running back in this league should touch it more than 18 times. I don't. 16 carries, two catches. Saquon Barkley, Gurley, Ezekiel Elliott. This is a 16 game season. 18's my number. I thought the Rams, not blaming them, but they did not have a legitimate backup. Overuse Gurley. Can we at least acknowledge that physically? He didn't appear to be the same late. It's like a pitcher that threw too many innings. That's what it looked like to me. Am I wrong? I don't know. He wasn't. He wasn't hurt. He I mean, wasn't when I hurt. when I when I got there, I think the injury was more serious than what we all thought in the building. You know, when I got there, it was like, okay, CJ, you know, you're gonna play, and then when 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 thirties back and ready to go, it's thirties, which I was like. That's perfectly fine. I get an opportunity to start yeah. like I've had before. I get an opportunity to put some games on tape. And then I can earn my opportunity and working away in a row because he didn't play a lot of snaps before I got there because Malcolm Brown was coming in and spelling him too. So, um, you know, he was on the outside, you know, and watching him at practice and stuff. He looked perfectly fine, but who knows how he really felt. You know, he wouldn't tell nobody that. That's just the type of the guy and the player he is and, you know, thank God football is the ultimate team sport. Yeah. By the end, though, you, you did think he was healthy against New England. I do. I think he was healthy against New England, healthy against Dallas, healthy against New Orleans. You just couldn't run um, the ball. I just think we couldn't get going the way we wanted to get going. And, and maybe some things have changed when I got there as far as um, – Blocking schemes maybe? A little I wouldn't want to say blocking schemes, but rhythm-wise, you know, maybe um, – and I wouldn't know this because I, I, I didn't watch – you know, obviously I was, a, I was a Panther and I didn't get a chance to, unless they was on prime time. You know, maybe the way he gets into a rhythm was different. Like with me, um, you know, I can get going right away. Maybe it takes a while to get going. I wouldn't know that, you know, but, um, you know, 30's best back in the game. That's my opinion. He's been the best back in the game for a very long time. And, you know, a, a guy who can put up 15, 16-plus touchdowns a year is, is very dangerous with the football. By the way, uh, the play, I, I, I've said this before, is that – I think we forget sometimes the NFL has a playbook. Now, the NBA has got plays and baseball and <laughs> soccer have plays. The NFL has got a playbook. Um, you were able to walk into the Rams and pick it up fast. Uh, listen, you, you got to be a smart guy to get into Cal. Uh, you're obviously quick, quick, quick guy. Um, is the Rams playbook, is it complex? Is it simple? I've heard both because you picked it up fast. I think it's super complex. I think what helped, I had the familiarity with um, Gary Kubiak offense. I think the roots of the Shanahan, Gruden, Kubiak, the roots of the West Coast, um, too, is I'm the type of player. I'm a football junkie. So, you know, I knew a lot about Coach McVay and some of the coaches on that coaching staff before I jumped in, like, oh, this is where they came from. This is who they learned from. That kind of helps me, you know, on the deeper side of the football, you know, when you're playing D coordinators, you know, like Bill Belichick and who he learned from and why he's a defensive minded coach and, you know, who he takes in from, or like Dennis Allen when we played New Orleans and who, you know, the, the Greg Williams background that he has. And they put their own wrinkles and twists into it. Um, I think that, and then another, I mean, I played with one of the greatest preparers on the planet. And, you know, your whole playbook's open when you're playing with Peyton Manning. And, you know, I think that was an advantage and a help in my career, um, you know, pushing me to that cerebral point. And also think, you know, if you get a chance to play with Peyton, you know, you might, you know, it might be February, you know, but he might call Audible something way back in April. So every everything's open. And if you can learn from Peyton and if you can learn his playbook, then I think you can pick up anybody's in the league. How far is Jared Goff 
forget Peyton Manning. That's like comparing everything <laughs> to the sun. But Jared's still an infant. He's a newbie. He's a kid. Do you think three more years, four more? Because I feel like Brady in the last five years is just intellectually has taken it to another level. He's seen everything. I don't feel like Tom first eight years was that. How far has Goff got to go? I mean, he's obviously a nice arm talent. Throws a great deep ball, but he's a baby. He can throw everything. Um, he's close. I mean, obviously, um, you know, it's crazy. We, we were talking, you know, right after the Super Bowl in the shower, me and him were, which this sounds weird, but don't take it that way. <laughs> but me and him was in the shower, the last two in the shower together, and he was just saying that, you know, there's things that he wished he could have done when he was reflecting back, like changing the plays. And, and it, the good thing is he's starting to see it. You know, now it's the conversation whether if he can do it all the way. And I think Coach McVay will let him do it because he is that type of player. He is very smart and he can make all the throws. But I think, you know, he's taking he's taking that to the next level. And I think that's, you know, the, the above the neck is what's going, you know, Push the you know to be the Brady's and the Breeze and and Philip Rivers and and you know the the elite quarterbacks that you see in this league, um, you know he has that ability and I think he's seeing it and going into year four to be able to do more and then going to year five and then going to year six so who knows when it will completely break out but the good thing is he's seeing it and he knows it now and um, you know hopefully if, if I'm a Ram again hopefully we can uh, we can do that together next year. So you stood next to me. I'm six two and about a buck ninety three. That's good, man. I know. Okay, now you are how tall? 5'8". And how much you weigh? Right now, about 230. Okay, so I'm going to do a little role play. Okay. If, if I was a free safety. Woo, and, and you, good luck. <laughs> and you break through, and here I come as a safety. Do you get more joy out of rolling over me, <laughs> putting a move on me? Like, do you, you when, when you break free, you look so much bigger than your weight. <laughs> By the way, there's a lot of backs your weight, but you... What do you like when that box opens up? We have a picture against the Rams. Would you rather roll a guy or juke a guy? Depend on the game, the part of the game. Uh, in the beginning, I want to set the tone. So I want to let you know that I'm, I'm going to come here. I'm going to own you today. Like, I'm going to hit you in the mouth. Move. Um, and then when you come on blisses, I get a chance to hit you in the mouth again. And then when I get you on that, that, that second half, the third quarter, and you on your heels, then I can try to, you know, get by you. But. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not world-class speed. So, you know, my game is getting on edges and breaking tackles and making it hard for you. So I got to I gotta hit you I gotta hit you in the mouth first, and then it makes the break tackle place a little easier later. No, in the I game. think once you hit me in the mouth, I'd just wave a flag <laughs> and get the hell off the field. I don't think you'd have to fake me out later. CJ, I just quit. I don't Do you think have... you could take one hit? Oh, hell no. In the NFL? <laughs> yeah, you can. Oh, God, oh, God yeah, you no. You can't tackle like Emmanuel Sanders or Brandon Cooks. No disrespect no. to them. Them good players, great players. But, I mean, you got to catch them first. Deshaun Jackson, I always, Odell. I, I'll say this. Okay, this is going to sound ridiculous. Don't think I'm an egomaniac. But I do believe if Brady was rolling to a sideline, I could come and cut his legs. <laughs> That's fair. Not, I, said, I didn't say That's Cam. Fair. That's fair. I didn't say Sam Darnold. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say Aaron Rodgers, but if but Tom is 41, I'm 55. If he was going to the sidelines, I could go a forearm shimmy to his leg and kind of roll him out. Is now, that would so you be mad if Tom face, face, you know, I mean, not face, but stiff arm you into the grill? Would you be like, oh, I didn't expect that? I'd get up and ask for an autograph. <laughs> He's still six foot four, 225 pounds. Yeah, that sounded stupid. Did I sound like an idiot there? Yeah. I sounded like an idiot there. I mean, it's... Like it's it's harder than it looks. <laughs> yeah. They're all really good out there, so they make. You it should look go. You know what? By the, by the way, uh, what do you make of Antonio Brown? Like my whole thing is, dude. This is why you have agents. Don't get your feelings all caught up in this stuff. It's not personal. You, you made money. You gonna make more money. I worry that Antonio Brown is scaring off good organizations that are like, dude, he's off the rails because he's a great player, and that he won't end up with a great quarterback. He'll end up with a second tier organization. Have you ever been so mad? What do you make of what he's doing? Because he's clearly great, and he's going to get paid. Should he have just stayed off Twitter? No, nah, I think he's he's taking control of, of his career. I mean, I look at it, obviously, I'm like you guys, I'm talking about it from the outside in, but from the outside in and just when things flared up, we didn't really hear nothing until after the season. Now he had blow up on the sidelines and – We've seen, I don't worry too much. We've about seen that. all receivers do that. Yeah, I don't you know, care about T. that. T.O. Odell. Yeah, we've seen yeah. all, But as far as from the outside in, he, you know, it was about the team. He never, you know, disrespected 
any of his teammates, you know, during the season. He kept it about the team. Of, you know, obviously the last game of the season was that's when things start to to, to turn, take a turn. But, um, you know, he played for Pittsburgh. He, you know, he gave his heart and everything to him. And, you know, after the season, that's when he started to, you know, make the Twitter and the Instagrams and the things like that. So, um, you know, as he, I don't I don't. I don't agree with you about running good teams, good organizations off because during the 16 games season, it was about Pittsburgh, you know, and just this last month or so, you know, when they didn't make the playoffs and then free agencies coming around, that's when he started to, you know, open up about how he really felt, but he kept it, you know, he kept it in house compared to what was going on over there with other players that I would not say. I hope the Rams keep you just so you can come on our show more. <laughs> Selfishly, I hope the Rams keep me because it's fun and they're doing. I, I like what they're doing, and we got unfi- we got unfinished business, of course. It's great meeting you. Thank you. It really is, <laughs> CJ Anderson. This was an absolute pleasure. Hi, everybody! Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.